Hello friends, uh, welcome to part 8 of our uh, Crash Course RPG early. So this is going to be our uh, data structures part 2 uh, video. Okay, so last time uh, we were like uh, discussing the basic um, syntax about data structure and then we also have seen some of the uh, different types of data structures, right? So this video is going to be a short video but uh, still uh, important one because uh, we're going to see some uh, special data structures uh, which is available over the uh, in, uh, inbuilt IBM I which will be used in many cases okay also we're going to see some nested data structures okay which will be very much helpful when we are trying to parse XML or JSON those steps so with no further delay let's get into our programming so let's talk about the special data structures so there are some uh, data structures called uh, PSDS in other ways called as program status data structures and also sometimes uh, INFDS called information file data structures and also a yeah, data array data structures those are uh, useful in its own way so let's see one by one so first of all I'm going to say PSDS so here okay let me put the situation first so PSDS is nothing but a yeah, program status data structure which will give us some um, uh, what to say some system level information okay so that that will be needed by us at any point of time for example if I give a shift escape 7 so you very much know that this is our job name right so job number and user ID and then uh, the uh, name of the job so assume for some reason we want to uh, retrieve this information inside the RPG LE. so how do you do that so if you go inside so I have a program already available so I um, can go take f4 okay so normally whatever okay so normally we put ds in uh, data declaration type right but we won't touch this field if you take f1 you can see here s yes is for to denote this data structure is actually a program status data structure okay so if you if you give a s yes here then whatever you have defined it in the name that becomes a program status data structure and once we have defined a data structures with uh, sds then there will be uh, some uh, inbuilt values available in its own position say for example here i have taken some values okay the job name will be available from position 244 to 253 and user id from 254 to 263 and so on so if you want to know uh, this information uh, i can give a link uh, in the description below basically that is actually a ibm link again you can see psds example okay so there are uh, pretty much of uh, uh, inbuilt or uh, the existing uh, position which is available to retrieve whatever the information we want so maybe you can go through it uh, and see whether it will be useful for you so for this is nothing just we are going to retrieve the job name username and uh, job number okay so very simple straightforward program we are define we have declared a data, data structure just the fact that we just give another s yes here so that the values will be uh, will be available already when the program starts executing so let's see so i'm going to file this one okay then if we take compile let me do it in no debug i go okay so sg call so here you can see we have not assigned anything we just created this thing and then you can see the date is displayed job name username job number so if we go individually you can see date job name what we have just seen then user id and then job number 651537 651537 okay so this works so you can go to this link and then check the other useful information which you might be required okay so this is with respect to the program structure data structure okay and then uh, there is something called infts so information file data structures so if you go to uh, another link okay here it's a uh, it's okay it's about a uh, file information okay at any point of time if you want to know uh, status of a file and some of the information about the file uh, uh, when i talk about file it's nothing but it can be a display file or a pf or okay or a printer file whatever uh, but since in this particular tutorial we have not touched anything with respect to file so i'm not going to uh, demonstrate this particular example here but as part of data structures i'm just going to explain that okay we have something called infds so it's something like when uh, you can declare when you declare a file right uh, in your specification you can give uh, infds it's a keyword and you can give your data structure name and then inside the data structure name there will be some inbuilt position 
in which we can retrieve some information about it okay so these are all the information which can be retrieved uh, as part of your pf is concerned uh, we'll be seeing this example maybe when we touch upon the physical fail concept in the later point of the video okay and the third one is actually the data area data set okay so data area is also uh, which we have not touched uh, until now but i have made a separate video maybe i can give the link in the description below uh, you can go and see what is data area and how to use it but as a quick uh, introduction uh, what i'm going to do here so here is the example which i have already done uh, pgm ds2 but before that uh, display data area star lda so star lda is actually a default data structure sorry default data area will be created locally for each session so I, as of now you can see it's a blank so i'm going to say change data area okay and then maybe from position 11 to 10 so from position to next 11 to next 10 position i'm going to say anything okay like this so once i have done this right so what will happen um yeah let's see the program here okay so this is the keyword okay so let me go inside take a four so we have seen yes here right for the program let me close this one okay let me take a phone here so yes we have seen this for a program status data structure but we also have a u u is for a data area data structure so once we give a u here then it means whatever we have declared here is actually a data structure but it's based on uh, a data area okay so here i have given a data area star lda okay and then this value will be taken from the position from the data area so you know if you go and see display data area star lda you can see now the value is available here from position 11 to uh, maybe from position 11 so i'm taking from position 11 to 20 so see the syntax here is actually from start in index and then the ending index okay so let's see what happens if you just file compile call you can see the value yusuf is printed because it's available here so suppose if you have any other data area i also i also created another data area called display data area lda ds i think yeah so you can see this is actually a uh, data area created by me okay and available which is having the value called muhammad in, in this particular same position so if you go and change the program and instead of the data area star lda i'm going to give lda ds lda ds okay then the value will be taken from this data area okay so let me file this one and then call it sorry call you can see the value muhammad printed okay so this is the uh, data area data structure okay usefulness of data area data structures uh, okay fine let us go back okay so the last one is actually nested data structures okay liability okay so finally the last portion is a nested data structure okay so nested data structure is nothing but it's a way it's a, it's a way to interact data structures within a data structure okay so this is a classic example of like a matrix or even uh, something else with respect to uh, xml or json parsing okay so here i have some example let's take a simple example okay so in general we this is a 3 by 3 matrix normally we'll say right so it contains three rows and three columns so if you want to represent a data structure which holds this value and in many programming languages it will be represented in this way okay a array of array so this is actually an array and you can see we are having uh, a, a larger array which contains a three arrays okay so how do you do this so if you go to the program so here is the thing okay so what i have done is a next example okay here you go okay so here yeah fine let's compare this okay so i have a field called column okay and i said it's going to be 3 a 0 and dimension of 3 okay it's going to occur three times okay and then i said that is belongs to a data structure called row and then the row is actually a dimension of 3 okay so here nothing but this particular one segment okay 
is represented by this column okay which is a 3 0 of occur occurrence of 3 and then I said okay I am going to have 3 set of this column and I am going to assign this with the name of row. So, if you do this what will happen I can access the information uh, like row of i dot column of j. So, here uh, the row will take the value 1 2 3 and for each row of 1 2 3 there will be a column of 1 2 3 ok. So, that is how it works. So, uh, it is just a simple uh, for loop I have just run it take a two, took a four, two for loops and then it just assigned values inside maybe if you want uh, I can just go file this one compile it. Okay, so here we go. So I, if I took a breakpoint here, and if I click here, F four, F eleven, you can see. Uh, okay, when you are seeing the value in the debug mode, okay, it will show something like row dot column of one comma one. But if you want to access it, you have to access something like this. Okay, row of what are the index dot column of what are the index. So in this case, it will be the value of what. Uh, we put i into j so it will be 2 into 3 6 ok so it will be 6. So that is it for simple example. So if you want to do a little bit complex example uh, a real world example something like this assume we are having a student data structure or a data structure to hold a student information ok. So in the information is something like a first name, last name and also a contact info and the contact info can contain a mobile phone, a work phone and a email and email is further go down to your personal email or your official email okay and then a department number which comes in as a as a child to the uh, student uh, data set itself so uh, let's see how to do this okay so if you go here i have already done it okay first of all so the student is actually the data set your name right so we have given student is a ds and said qualified okay and then it contains four fields first name last name contact info and department ok. So, I have given all this here and then uh, the declaration I have given for the 3 and the contact info I have not given anything because I do not know what is inside ok because contact info is actually a another data structure which can hold other information. So, I said contact info is actually a data structure based on contact underscore t. So, what is this contact underscore t? So, contact underscore d t is actually a template ok here and I have created the template with this uh, structure which means the template will contain a mobile phone, a work phone and a email ok and you can see mobile phone and work phone you can just directly define because we know the value but for email we cannot define because we do not know the value because it further goes down. So, mobile phone and work phone I have declared with some declaration and email I said again the email is going to be another data structure uh, based on the template called email underscore t and then I have defined uh, declared email underscore t is actually a template contains a personal and official uh, email IDs. So, this is the way we can uh, declare a nested data structure and you can see to access the information uh, or to yeah to assign values and retrieve values we have to access something like uh, student dot uh, first name last name kind of stuff. So, for example, if you want to access this official then it is uh, student dot contact info dot email dot official ok. So, you can see student contact info email official. So, this is how it works and it will work. Uh, sorry, so just to give uh, this thing. So, I have assigned all the values and once all the values are assigned, if I go and check the student dot first name, it gives the value, but if I give only um, student and see the result, you can see the values are here. So, this is with respect to the nested data structures ok. So, that is it for this video yeah ok. So, hope this helps you uh, with some more information about the data structures. So, this is the um, what uh, end of data structures uh, tutorial. Uh, so, the next video we are gonna go inside and then see subroutines and sub procedures and uh, till now we are like going procedural ok. So, we just create a single program and then do all those steps. But from the next video onwards we are gonna have multiple programs interact to each other 
and then we'll start seeing some ILE concepts and then eventually we'll go down and then see the rest of the tutorials okay so that's it for this video hope this helps and uh, thanks for watching uh, if you have any comments please give it in the description okay bye